All right, I am really excited to show you how I make my brown butter. I have become quite a brown butter aficionado, I guess you could say, because I have transitioned into a very uh, high fat protocol on the way I eat. And I find that this is one of the best ways to increase my fat at each meal. Plus, I also love these for anybody who's new into keto and carnivore, when you're really fighting off those sugar cravings or those chip cravings or basically cravings in general uh, can hit you at any time. And you can go into the freezer and grab some of these brown butter bites and it's almost like biting into a consistency of chocolate, of course, without the sweet, but it's so satiating. And so I wanna show you how I make mine so that you're not intimidated by it. To me, it's so much better than just plain butter in the freezer or in the refrigerator. It's almost like a treat without being a treat. It's something I've never, um, and I've got quite an extensive overeating binge background. I've never binged on this because you really just can't. It's it's very rich. So I'm going to start off with showing you, uh, you can basically use any kind of butter. I, <laughs> in doing this so many times, I know for sure I like the salted butter. I do not make this with unsalted butter. I love the taste of the salt. I feel like the salt is really necessary in my diet and this is a really great way to get it. I actually, if the butter does not have quite enough salt to my taste, you'll see once I'll show you when I put it into the molds, I will actually uh, crack some fresh uh, salt over the top, either uh, my Malbon, the real salt, or I'll even show you a savory version. So all sorts of butters, anything works. I, I actually do find that the different butters, since I've been making this so often, uh, the different butters actually uh, have different uh, cooking uh, patterns to them. But for the most part, uh, they're, I'm going to show you the very similar ways and how you can be successful at making brown butter the first time out. Uh, again, there's all sorts of Irish butters. This is an amazing one. I've only been able to find this at the ShopRites if you live in the Northeast or have a ShopRite, but incredible butters. But you can actually just regular great value Walmart butter, Walmart butter tastes amazing when you brown it and in my opinion, add a little extra salt. But I'm gonna use uh, for today's demonstration, I'm just using the Kirkland grass-fed butter. I've made this one before. Uh, Kerry Gold works fine. Uh, <laughs> very interesting how you can get a very, very op opinionated uh, take on butters once you start doing this. So the first step is just to, let me get my little spatula, silicone. I'm using a white pan, it's a ceramic coated pan, but I purposely picked the white one so that as I'm cooking this, you'll be able to, I'm gonna start the other video so I'll be able to get some uh, close up pictures. Um, I'm doing it in the white so that as I cook this, you will be able to see the color change that I wait for. So step one, really is just letting it melt. I do the whole process on pretty much low, just above low, low verging on medium. And I, I find that it takes about a, I mean, the start to finish with spooning them into the molds does take a little bit of time, but maybe 15 minutes and well worth it. I actually, <laughs> have to keep making this very frequently because I store them in my freezer and I go to them frequently for each of my meals that might need uh, some extra fat added. So while this is melting, I'm going to show you uh, some of the molds. I always use a silicone mold 
These make it really easy once you put them in the freezer just to pop them out. And I'm gonna give you a close up. This one's kind of cute. I make these uh, little brown butter bears. And this one has a honey camp comb pattern to it. I like this one for the, the depth of it. It has a nice uh, bite to it. And then these are a little bit deeper, but again, very easy just to pop out and store. So as that's melting, I'm going to give you a little bit of my experience with this and my preference. As you brown the butter, the solids that cook will You'll, you'll get a kind of like a salty, brown, darker brown sediment on the bottom, which some people actually take like a cheesecloth and filter out. I say no, 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 no on that. This is my favorite part and I'll show you how I go to great lengths to try to get some of that dark part into each of the molds as I'm spooning it in. So. I will show you how I do that, but this is again just melting at this point. So the whole step one is, and you don't have to really start through the whole time of this melting. Get it melted, turn it up just a touch, it's just above low. And you do not have to stir it the whole time, although I'm going to say you do need to be attentive to it. I'm going to do mine in this mold today. It's actually that, though that eight ounces of butter is going to take two of these. I'll put a link below for a couple of my favorite molds that you can connect right into Amazon on. Uh, I don't like them too large. I like to be able to measure out uh, exactly how much butter I'm eating when I'm doing my my protocol for keeping my ratios good. Next stage is happening now where it is, and I will show you the close up view here, but it is going into what I call the crackle bubble sizzle stage. And you will, it's interesting, it's visual and auditory making this, which I find is very helpful in getting me through the stages uh, of where I know I'm at before before it might potentially reach the burn stage because we don't want to burn the butter. And I have to say, I have probably made about 15 pounds of brown butter at this point, and I have not yet once burnt the butter, so I'm hopefully not going to prove myself wrong here. But um, you, you're not leaving the butter for any length of time, but you do not have to stir it the whole time. So. Here we are. I'm going to zip it up so you, it can pick up on the video over here, the sound of this. And it's really just kind of like crackling and bubbling. And what it is, is the moisture is evaporating out of the butter. So at this point, the butter is not really turning any change in color yet. Maybe it's getting a little bit more golden yellow, but you'll see I, and there's no right or wrong as far as how long you cook it to what extent you brown your butter. I personally have found I really enjoy my brown butter on the far end of brown, and there's never ever been a burnt or off flavor to it, so I'm not even sure what it would look like if I did end up burning it. I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point. Um, I hope not, but I'm, I'm sure it will happen at some point. But again, this is the bubble crackle sizzle stage, let's call it. And you have to wait through this. And I usually just stir it a little bit haphazard and randomly just to keep the butter moving a little bit. Just have to wait through this stage because the next stage you will see it quiets down and starts foaming up. Now I have gotten gotten into such a pattern of how I make this. I know 
that this half tablespoon, uh, have, it's got to be metal or the very, very hot butter when you're at the point where you're going to spoon it into the mold, uh, you need metal. So, and I'll put a link to these too. I love these. This is, let me just show you, a magnetic set and it's got a leveler up on the top, but I think they're just awesome so that you just stick them in the drawer just like that. Amazon. <laughs> okay, so now, still in the bubble stage, but now the color you can see is starting to change and you can see some of that deeper, I just call it sediment, <laughs> the deeper bottom settles uh, and it will just keep getting deeper and deeper brown. The liquid up on top will get like a caramel color and the bottom s part that settles out will get actually to be a dark brown. But okay, now you can see we're getting to the foaming stage. It quieted down. It's not crackling and sizzling and We'll just watch it here that it is just kind of forming a foam over the top. And again, I'm going to make sure I don't cook this too hard too fast because at this point I do stir it continuously because now the butter is really hot there is that dark brown sediment on the bottom and I am just going to be cautious just to keep it moving. And then the question is, at what point do you stop? And at what point do you risk it burning? Um, make sure you turn it all the way down to low at this point and I'm just waiting for the foam that's on the top to just kind of settle down and reduce the foam layer. The foam layer doesn't seem to go away all the way, so don't wait for that point. And remember, the butter's really hot, so it's going to, con and the pan's really hot, so even when you remove it from the burner, it's still going to cook a bit. So you can see how this is changing and I'm trying to get you a good view of underneath that foam how beautiful and dark and caramelly this is starting to look and there's absolutely silence now it's not crackling not bubbling it's just at the point where the foam is just kind of settling down and the color of the butter is getting deeper and deeper. So I'm going to shut it down now because when I look at those, that bottom part that's settling in, it gets to a very, very deep brown and then I get scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, here we go. We're one step away from going black. So, but random, there's no, I, I can't even tell you a time uh, because each butter is a little bit different, I've realized. Uh, so just go by color, go by sound, go by sight. And it's okay that you still have foam on the top because I don't think I've ever made it where the foam totally settles off. All right, so I have turned off the burner and I'm gonna show you what I do next. At this point, this is a half tablespoon measure, which I find works pretty well for this mold also. For the, the, the little butter bears, it's too much. So just, you'll figure it out what works for you. All right, now, because like I said, I want to get some of that brown on every single one of these. I tilt the pan to the side like this. I stir and scoop and then just kind of pull along the bottom. There's no real like major science to this. 
of how we make sure we try to get some of that brown in every one, but I just find, just scoop along the bottom and you'll see how fast and easy this is. Now, I have found that I absolutely love the intense saltiness of this and it really helps when you're trying to cut cravings. It helps for me also as an end to my meal. I don't know if any of you have experienced where you finish a nice big piece of meat, like a steak, and you're still kind of looking for something. And of course that something cannot be ice cream or dessert or anything like that. So I find that this substitutes as a beautiful something. And when it's intensely salty, it is, I don't know, it's just a wonderful thing. So, all right, so I've got this first mold totally done. I still have more to go, but I have that second mold here and I'll show you. You can see how the solids are there and that's exactly what is getting scraped and included into the, um, into each of the molds. All right. So to this, I will, because like I said, I'm, I'm really enjoying the saltiness. I either take these large uh, Maldon flakes and, and drop them on, can use a, a little, a grinder and put some on. Redmond's Real Salt, just sprinkle it on. Fine salt works great too. And you can have fun with it. Uh, if you want more of a savory one, this is an amazing, it's Italian black truffle salt. And I'm gonna put a link to this exact one. I know there's a, a bunch of truffle salts out there, but this one is top notch. It's a little pricier than the others that are um, on Amazon, but I love this one. So I'm gonna put a link to that and a little goes a really long way. But so what I'm gonna do, let's see, what am I in the mood for? I'm just gonna do this one on here, which I just do a light coarse grind of the salt. Totally optional for some people. Like, <laughs> like I said, some people are straining that deliciousness off. I would, I would cry. <laughs> um, but that in itself can be pretty intensely salty. So try it first without doing the extra salt on the top and uh, try to gauge based on the butter. So I think this butter that I tried, the uh, Cabot brand, was particularly not that intensely salty. And I guess I should read on the package and note the sodium level to actually get an idea of how much salt is in some of these because I, like I said, the, the intensity of the salt is uh, a very big thumbs up for me. Uh, so you can play with it and put other, you can do cinnamon, but that would be if you did unsalted sweet creamery butter, uh, maybe do cinnamon and do more of a dessert one. Uh, I don't know, I'm just so in love with these just the way they are that uh, that's it. And simple, easy. I usually will put this in the refrigerator first just to solidify a little before I kind of toss it in the freezer for the final freeze. And then once it's frozen, I'm popping them out. I put them into a, a glass, uh, you know, block top container and I am at them every single day. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Uh, if you got some value out of this video, hit the subscribe and I'll see you next time.